Hey everyone, my name is Zach. I'm a 23 year old competitive boulder from Canada, currently living in Montreal. Welcome back to the Comp Climb training series, where I record most of my training, provide in depth analysis of every session, and just chat about climbing with an emphasis on competition. So, it has been a while since I've done one of these. I'm going to be doing a bit of a program breakdown right now. So, if you're not interested in seeing like a pretty detailed overview of the program we're going to be doing for the next few weeks, you can just use, use the timestamps to fast forward to our sessions. Uh, the first one's going to be at Rose Block. So, yeah, you can just skip to that if you're not interested. But if you are, um, I'm going to be basically start like kind of focusing up my training a bit more. Um, if you if you've noticed for the past like about three weeks my training has been quite unfocused and I've mainly just been doing bouldering and I haven't really taken the time to mention this yet because I wasn't really sure what was going on but I knew that I was kind of just going through a phase of being super super psyched um, obviously we are just like arriving in Montreal and all of these beautiful gyms honestly is quite overwhelming and it's just like it feels like absolute heaven and all I want to do is climb so I kind of allowed myself to just skip out on a super strict program for a while and sort of just live in the psych and the motivation and just the desire to go climb and boulder all the time because at the end of the day I, I am kind of like a believer that you can just get better um, at, even at competitive bouldering by just bouldering itself it's definitely not the most optimal, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, it wasn't the end of the world for myself to kind of just, you know, let loose and go climb all the time. So anyway, that's where I've been at for the last three weeks. But there are a couple reasons that I want to get strict again and, um, you know, hop back on a strict program and a strict schedule. Uh, two reasons. The first being, obviously, we have this competition coming up in a bit. The first North American Cup of the season. It's about uh, just over a month away now, and it's time to really start making sure that I'm going to hit like a proper peak. And I I really am like putting like a lot of emphasis on the North American Cups this year. And I know that I would regret it if I didn't um, train optim optimally and properly. So that's what I really need to start doing now. And then the second reason is, obviously, uh, this is kind of what I was talking about in the at the end of the last episode. Um, my skin has just been not being able to keep up with this uh, cycle that I've been putting it through where I'm just going crazy with the boulder sessions. Obviously you see here, just like if we quickly look um, on a double bouldering day, I usually try to keep my sessions at around an hour and 15 minutes, usually even like an hour. Recently I've been doing like an hour and a half plus sessions times two a day on like sticky fiberglass boulders, which is just I'm, I'm in this downward spiral of my skin just getting worse and worse and uh, it's really taking a toll on me. So one of the biggest reasons that I want to start a program again is because we can have a look at um, this training here that we can see in this column and throughout the program. I really need to be, start hopping on um, some more spray wall and it's because this can really save the skin and um, also just make sure I'm training on like physical grip strength intensive boulders. So anyway, that's sort of uh, some context for why I'm really psyched to get back on a nice strict schedule. Uh, and so now we're going to move into the program breakdown. I've done a few of these in the past and I tend to ramble on, a, ramble on a lot. I kind of already have been doing it, but I'll try to keep this program breakdown brief um, since I've kind of done a few of them and I've kind of explained the very fundamentals of how I write a program. So let's just focus on this program in specific for this breakdown. So here is Zach the next day uh, re-recording this program breakdown because I forgot to start my screen recording as I was kind of doing my program breakdown yesterday, so uh, here I am redoing it. Anyway, like I said, let's try to keep this brief because it's easy for me to ramble on. So I'm just going to cover this program up to this first rest week. Obviously we have some more training going on after the rest week until we get to the North American Cup, but we will talk about that training when we get to it. For now, let's talk about the three weeks. As you can see, we have one week here, two weeks here another week and then a half week. Uh, let's just cover that up until the rest week. So basically these three weeks and a half are all the same week of training, just repeating until the rest week. Uh, so this here is an, a good example of like the core training week. And this week is the same. And this first half of the week is the same. 
This first week is the same in theory. Uh, I just had to rearrange the last half of it a little bit um, because you can see there's a comp here on this day. Uh, we heard about a local competition that's going on and so I'm gonna take part in this. Uh, it should be fun. I know the, that Victor Baudrin is gonna be there and then I told the McNamies about it and I'm gonna drive them up. So we got some uh, strong competitors to have a fun little comp against. I know there will probably be some other strong guys there as well. Um, Maddie won't be competing. I think she has a like a rest week during this time, but yeah, you can look forward to this. It'll be me and the McNamies and Victor, plus lots of other strong guys. Nice little showdown. So anyway, that kind of interrupts the perfection in this first week of training. And I just kind of had to re rearrange it a little bit. But anyway, let's take a look at this week here, because this is like a perfect like template of what this training program should look like. And this week here is like the core structure of this training cycle for the next three and a half weeks. So obviously my training weeks are six days long and it's like a three day cycle times two. So I do two training days followed by a rest day twice and that's a training week for me. And both halves of these training weeks are very, very similar. They're basically the same. The only slight difference is uh, you can see here this session on the day two of the first half of the week is campus followed by spray wall and here it's just simply switched. And uh, actually this is going to be one of the kind of new things that I'm gonna experiment a little bit with in this uh, training phase. And so the biggest idea is usually when I have this kind of session, I will have either like a dedicated campus session or a dedicated spray wall session. So usually this session will be like, you know, an hour and 15 minutes of spray wall and this session will be like an hour of canvassing. But what I'm gonna try and do uh, for this training phase is basically do half and half all the time. So what this effect does is it keeps uh, canvassing in particular, I find fresh in my mind throughout this training phase. And so if I were to only do like one campus session a week on this day, and then this would be spray wall, basically I only do campusing once every six days, which isn't that frequent. And what um, this does is it doesn't necessarily stay super fresh in my mind, like the technique and the neurological pathways. So by doing it every three days and just like a little bit less at a time, it keeps the movement patterns really, really fresh in my mind. And I find that this is quite helpful and important leading into like a comp or like a peak season, especially because nowadays like comp style bouldering is, you know, very upper body movement based. Campusing helps build a lot of fundamental comp style techniques, whether it be like dynamic moves or like paddle moves or just campusing itself. And so keeping this muscle memory very, very fresh in my mind by doing it every three days, even just for like 45 minutes or half an hour at a time, uh, I think I want to try this out because I haven't done it and I want to see if uh, keeping it really fresh in my body like helps. And like same sort of thing with spray wall. It, it'll also just be fun to always be doing these two things all the time rather than, you know, here's my one spray wall session a week I get or my one campus session a week. I can do like half and half in one session and I get to basically always do it, uh, which should be fun. So I want to try that out. So that's like the newest thing. Everything else is very similar style training to what I've done in the past. Our first uh, day of training in the week is two bowler sessions. That's usually how it goes for me. I like to do my bouldering first because it's the most important training in my opinion and I want to be fresh while I do it. And then I always do like hangs last because I find I can't do any um, climbing super well after I do my hangs and pinch block because my fingers will be tired. Thus meaning that spray wall has to live in this uh, morning session. And then I like to do my strength exercises between uh, these two days, or sorry, these two sessions. And uh, nothing too fancy for this uh, workout in the training cycle, just our standard dips, jump squats, military press, and pistol squats. And they're in brackets here because I superset them. And we're at like a two rep range for this training cycle because we're getting close to a comp and I want to start peaking and really pushing my weights. And then, yeah, so both halves of the training week are basically the same. And then we just repeat this until the training cycle is over, or well, until this rest week happens, and then the training switches up a bit, and we start to taper down the volume even more as we are leading up into the North Burn Cup. And so yeah, I think that's basically the gist of this training program. It'll be nice to be doing some spray wall again. I think that will be helpful for my skin, and also just help me build back a bit of power. I've been noticing that my power is sort of 
been depleting a little bit recently because we've simply just been bouldering and a lot of like technical bouldering in that as well. So it'll be nice to do some spray wall. And uh, I have actually still been doing like strength exercises and hangboard off camera in the past three weeks. So I won't be too rusty with this training. But yeah, that covers the program breakdown. Um, I guess I'll just quickly mention at the time I'm recording this, I've already done these two days of training. So you can see that the red text is just sort of uh, me filling in what I've done. So we went to Roseblock for these two sessions. I climbed for this amount of time. And then we went to offsite, obviously for the campus of spray wall day and the strength exercises. And these are like all the weights I do in the order I do them, right? So this 70 here means I did 70 pounds for my dips. 30 here means I did 30 pounds for my jump squats and etc. And uh, I always just fill this in as I go along. And I, it's been a while since I've also done, I've been on a dedicated program. And for those who don't know, uh, when I'm on one of these programs, I always have my program linked as a PDF in the description in case you want to study it yourself, uh, you know, get some inspiration for your own training and see what I am doing. I always have it linked in the description of every video as a PDF and uh, I update it from time to time when, if I need to like switch up my schedule a bit uh, or whatnot. So you can find it down in the description if you're interested in looking at it more yourself. But anyway, I have rambled on for a long time, as I usually do. Uh, so let's go jump into the first session of the episode, which is going to be a boulder session at Roseblock. So here we are at Roseblock for our session of bouldering. Like I said, we have an hour and 15 minutes max uh, for this bouldering session. And I was like, we haven't had a session here at Roseblock in a while. So I was like, the gym was filled with lots of lots of new bowlers that I haven't gotten on. So I knew that it was going to be quite the challenge um, to not go over time because I was definitely not going to have enough time to try everything or like fully properly project the hardest bowlers in the gym with just two hour and 15 minute long sessions. So this was gonna be like the ultimate test of whether or not I could control myself and not go over time. And that was like my biggest goal. I think it is gonna be really, really important for me to find a sustainable way of training here in Montreal. And so I need to have a good start to this program and not go over time. And uh, here we are starting off this first boulder with um, me almost squishing a couple teenagers. They were lucky that I hadn't gotten to the crux yet or I hadn't like started the next move. So crisis avoided. Um, yeah, anyway, here we are starting on a V9. This is like the first nice physical boulder that I'm starting with in the session um, before I make my way to like some of the hardest looking bowlers in the gym. And I think an interesting idea I was thinking of, especially after the last episode, I was watching that back while I was editing it. And I was thinking to myself, like, man, I was really whining a lot in the last episode. And I was really sort of complaining about how I was not feeling too good throughout most of the sessions. And it's like a fine line I have to thread um, most of the times when I'm like talking about my sessions here is that I do want to give context to how I'm feeling throughout these sessions. And I think it's important, um, especially in order for me to kind of talk about my mentality. Like, let's say I'm having a bad session or I'm not feeling so strong. I want to like kind of talk about the mentality that I use during these kinds of sessions and how I approach um, a bad session or like even if I'm just not doing too well on a boulder or maybe I feel like I'm not performing at my best on a boulder. I like to sort of talk about my mentality towards these things, right? But at the same time, it can sound like I am making excuses a lot of the times and that's kind of what I it felt like when I was watching back the last episode. And I definitely don't want to be out here um, like saying, oh yeah, you know, look at this boulder. I should have done this boulder, but I felt bad. 
So yeah, it's like an interesting, it's like a fine line that I have to thread. And so I think what, uh, anyway, the idea that I came up with maybe is to kind of just give my sessions like a quick rating out of 10 um, as we're starting a session. And then that's kind of, and just like leave it at that, right? So let's take this session, for example. This session, this morning session, I wasn't feeling the absolute best. So let's call this session like a six and a half out of 10 in terms of how like physically strong I was feeling. So like I wanna use this number as like a data point. Like the, it's just important context for the session because I'm making decisions on these boulders that we're trying um, in relation to how I'm feeling, right? So we're taking myself at a six and a half out of 10. A lot of these boulders that I'm getting on in the session, I know that I'm probably not going to be sending because I'm not feeling super close to a 10. So I was actually able to control myself quite well in this morning session and only put like three, four attempts on these boulders before realizing that okay, I know that I can't do this boulder right now, but if I was feeling closer to a 10, I think I could. And so I will save it for the second session and hopefully I will be feeling better and have a better chance at sending the boulder rather than trying to like really force it and like wreck my skin um, when I'm just trying something that maybe could be feeling easier on a different session. Like that last boulder we were just trying, that uh, cool Campus V12. If I tried to force a send on that boulder when I wasn't ready and just start repping out attempts, that's where I'm gonna ruin my skin and continue like this negative spiral that I have been experiencing. So I was able to control myself and only try that boulder like four times, I think, and then uh, move on and I'll revisit it later in the day. So we're off to a good start so far. And now let's talk about this boulder, this purple thing actually has quite a similar first move to that uh, blue bowler and it's kind of just going in the other direction this time. We have like a very bad start hold that we have to campus out of the position. The foothold on this boulder is just like a little dual text, like nothing foot, just kind of something to touch. And then obviously it kind of looks like we go campus left, right, and then out to like a juggy sloper. But that first, this first hold, <laughs> is really bad and actually because my tips are still like in a constant state of recovering like right now i have every time i start uh, a training day after a rest day i kind of have that like half healed uh pink skin that's kind of glassy and this is kind of why a lot of my sessions have been bad like right after a rest day and i've been constantly complaining about not being sticky or greasy, um, especially in the morning session, is because I have like this glassy, half healed pink skin. And I was really feeling it this morning as well. And so with these kind of like sticky, um, hanging on a bad hold campus out of that position, like we had two of these boulders in the session already, I really knew that I shouldn't try to force that move when I just did not have the stick or the power. And uh, usually it improves a bit in the second session when my skin, um, honestly, I don't even know why. I just, it kind of like warms up throughout the day. It just feels a bit better in the afternoon, especially after I've climbed in the morning. But in the morning, it especially when it's in this state of like healing from pinkness, it is uh, it's really glassy and slippery. And so like, let's think back to the yellow boulder at LA up, right? We all know what happens to me when I try to force sticky based boulders. It's, it's not good. I just end up wrecking my skin and honestly just training suboptimally. If a boulder is um, very stick intensive, don't try it when you're not sticky because you can't power through it. And that's really something that I've been getting through my head recently is to not try and force my way through sticky boulders because that's not how it works. Try to optimize for like a session where you can feel that your skin is good. It just feels sticky and then put some max effort attempts on that boulder. And uh, 
like really just embrace the stick factor. That's what I've been learning. So I'm gonna save those sticky boulders for the second session and move on to boulders that I can actually try in this morning session. And speaking of boulders that I can try, this comp boulder that we're trying here was a really good feeling one in for this morning session. While my grip was at like a six out of 10, um, my body was feeling pretty good and I was feeling pretty dynamic. So I knew that this boulder would be perfect to try. And actually this boulder, I had put a couple brief attempts on in our last session at Rose Block when we were climbing with Molly and Alora. Uh, but those clips didn't make it into the last episode because that video was getting quite long and none of us was, were really making any progress. I was not feeling dynamic or uh, powerful enough on that day to stick this first move. So this attempt here is actually the first time I've stuck this swing move at the beginning. And here I am trying to really send this boulder because the beginning is quite low percentage and I don't want to have to do it again. But this ending is quite hard. The triangle volume is not so good and actually kind of dusty. I wasn't uh, ready for that. And so my greasy skin in combination with dust was not a good combination. Um, and I actually don't really, uh, so I'm gonna send this boulder in a few tries, but even after I send it, I can't see an obvious intended sequence for this end because the way I end up doing it feels a little bit morpho. So I'm very curious to what the setters had in mind for this last move, because it was definitely quite cruxy. And this boulder is actually super epic. I, uh, I really, really enjoy this boulder. I think this is like a perfect comp style boulder uh, that we could def definitely be seeing in the North American Cups in like a semi-final round or whatnot. So here I am dropping the finish. It is, uh, the finish hold is quite good, but it's a really, really big move and you don't have a lot of push because your feet are like really stretched out. And when you hit the hold, it's really hard not to barn door. And so, Another thing that I'm trying to gonna try and do going forward is not get so caught up in sending boulders. So what I mean by that is I was actually ready to walk away from this boulder, even though I just dropped the finish match, or the finish move, sorry. But, and so this attempt I'm putting on here, which I desperately uh, get the last move, by the way, I was prepared for this to absolutely be my last try, no matter what, even if I didn't send. And this is another thing that I think is gonna be really important going forward. So you've heard me talk a lot about how I hate finish droppers, finish match falling, and I really, really like to send boulders. And that's kind of like the climber in me, even when it's not so optimal for training. Like, you know, let's say I fall, fall matching the finish hold. It's not necessarily optimal for training for me to go and rep out that last move uh, for a bunch of attempts, right? I'm not really getting value from the boulder anymore and it would actually be more beneficial for my training to go get more variety and try more boulders, especially because you know there's no shortage of boulders in Montreal and the more boulders I try, the more I'm feeding my supercomputer of a body and giving it more data and making my climbing instincts smarter and stronger. And uh, just, I like to talk about this a lot, like our unconscious climber mind, uh, the smarter that gets, the more we can trust it on the wall to figure out beta for us without us even having to think about it. And the way that we improve this skill is by trying more boulders. The more, the more boulders we try, the stronger the skill becomes. And so when I start wrapping out the same boulder because I keep falling on the last move, that is um, obviously counterintuitive to training the skill. And the reason it is so important that I train the skill is because I am a comp climber and I have a comp season coming up. I have three North American cups that I really, really want to prepare for and do well in and I'm very, very motivated. And so I can't lose sight of what I'm training for in this training phase and just get caught up in trying to send boulders and like project. And I really need to stick to the schedule. So anyway, this is all to say that I am 
going to really, really do my best to just not care about sending boulders. And this is going to be incredibly hard for me. Like, I, I just, especially, there, I'm not going to be able to do it all the time. Like, especially if we have just some super, super epic project. Like, let's think back to a couple episodes ago at Block Shop when we were trying that Black B13. And I just had this session of my life really working that. Um, you know, there are going to be some instances like that where I'll just have to try to really send a boulder. But for the most part, I'm going to try and keep it under wraps and really try to be able to walk away from boulders without a send. Maybe I'll try to make sure I do all the moves, maybe even get it in two parts. But I really want to lean into the, the idea that I'm training for these comps and that's at the forefront of my mind and rather than trying to send boulders. And I think that's important going into the comp season and I'm going to really try to embrace it. And here's a good example of this. So here we are in the second session of today's training, uh, another session at Roseblock later in the day. And this V11 was quite tricky. This crimp that we're going up to in the left hand is super, super small. And for this session, by the way, I was feeling better. Let's call this session like seven and a half out of 10. So an extra point higher than the morning session. I was feeling better, but uh, this crimp in my left, I couldn't quite grab it um, as, as well as I'd like to. And so I definitely knew that I had what it took to stick the move off the crimp, but I was really like, in this session, at least for sure, it was gonna take a lot more work to maybe get a send of that boulder. And meanwhile, I just have more boulders in the gym to try, um, more things to work on. Like I've got two campus paddles, I got some slab, I have like another V12 that we didn't even try in the morning session. And if I just start wrapping out this uh, crimp V11 like over and over again, I'm gonna be missing out on those other boulders. I'm probably gonna get a split on this tiny little crimper because that's what was actually starting to happen. And so I just walked away from it, which was really hard for me. And uh, I haven't done that in a while. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about this boulder really quick. So this boulder is obviously a super cool campus uh, paddle move at the beginning here. And I've tried it a handful of uh, times at this point. And this boulder is also going to feature today's tip of the day. And it is obviously going to be in reference to this first move. So this first move is super, super cool. We start on these two quite bad holds. And then the foothold um, as well, I guess I haven't mentioned yet, is just dual tech. So it's another sort of tap with the foot start position. And then we're moving into another quite bad sloper and crossing over to like a pretty good hold. So the first two holds to hang on and like pull into the next move is like super, super desperate. And it feels pretty limit because these holds are bad. And then the hold we're hitting uh, next is really bad as well. And so to move out of this position as well is really difficult to connect all of these movements as efficiently as possible is obviously what makes this move really hard. And I need every little microsecond and bit of oomph that I can get to get to this jug. And this will happen a lot with any sort of paddle moves uh, that you encounter is to like, obviously the holds that we're paddling off of are usually gonna be quite bad so that we can't stop off of them. Sorry, so that we can't stop on them. So we really need to maximize how we move through these holds. So I was noticing myself uh, to get like a really nice extra micro percentage of like speed and force and movement off of this right hand hold that we go up to, I started to twist and really emphasize um, as soon as I hit my right hand, not just kind of like pulling with my arm, especially because I'm gonna end up hitting this hold quite strangely if I just try to laterally pull with my right arm to go to the next move. Um, but if I hit this hand, the right hand, and I start to twist, it brings my body closer to the wall and engages like some more nice muscles. And I can really feel like my speed sort of start to increase with this rotation and my direction becomes nicer. And I start to optimize sort of my line and direction that I want going into my target hold, thus minimizing my amount of air time because I don't have a lot to play with since these holds that we're paddling through are uh, really, really bad. So I need to maximize or minimize the amount of time I'm in the air. So by hitting this hold and really rotating, 
uh, it helps me cross through faster and in a better direction to hit this jug. And I think that this is uh, a good technique that you can apply to a lot of paddle moves, honestly, like any sort of like sort of one, two, three paddle, like let's say, you know, you do a paddle where you go up right hand, left hand, and then you gotta go to your finish hold. We go right hand, we hit this left hand, and then we twist to get this last movement. I think that twisting mid paddle moves um, is a pretty good fundamental uh, technique that you can try to apply to um, really maximize your movement and minimize the amount of air time that you're using to really get you to that uh, finish hold of the paddle as fast as possible. So this here is the Sengo of this boulder. Let's pay attention when I hit my right hand on the second hold. You can notice a bit of a rotation and that helps get me to the, the jug just that little bit faster. Um, I really like rotate out of the shoulder and uh, yeah, I, so I stick this hold. Finally, uh, we've put quite a bit of, of tries on this boulder, but you'll notice I haven't tried the ending of this boulder yet. And so first, let me just say, I was kind of hoping obviously that I could step on this jug with my right foot, but it was feeling really insecure. And so I said, okay, this isn't gonna work. Let me drop down, rest for a second. Maybe I can think of something. And I actually do, like on the fly, I say, hey, maybe I can actually just bump again. The second last doesn't look so far away. So I find this like super clutch on the fly beta while I am like resting after thinking I'm gonna fall. But anyway, this just leads me into another thing that I'm gonna try to do, which is give more ground burns and um, less like jugging up to try crux moves. I find I've been doing that too much recently. And a lot of my sessions actually just consist of jugging around in order to try one move, which is a little bit, well, no, it's obviously suboptimal for comp training. And uh, yeah, like I said, we're really trying to put the emphasis on the comp training going forward. So I'm gonna to try to give more ground burns. And that was a good example of that. I had to really try and figure out the ending of that bowler uh, with pressure, like the send pressure, like right off the bat. And uh, I had like a nice kind of comp style moment, you could say. That's exactly what would have happened on that bowler in a competition, which was cool. So anyway, let's talk about this bowler again. So this first move, I was feeling a little bit stickier in the session. Not as greasy in the, as the morning, but maybe not the stickiest I've ever been in my life. But still, that first move, this first move is crazy. V10 on this boulder is a little bit spicy, I think. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the setters have done this move, uh, especially Chris. He's really strong. He's definitely done that yellow V11, by the way, I bet. He's like got really strong crimps. Um, like that's just my guess. I don't know if he has, but I bet he has. But uh, I, I need some advice on the first move of that purple paddle because that feels like and uh, V10 is like getting me scared that I'm like really missing something on that on that move. Um, but that boulder is pretty new. So I think the next I'll be able to try that again the next time we come to Roseblock. So anyway, this is the other V12 that I briefly mentioned. And as we can see, this is like another sticky style boulder. So at this point in the session, I definitely knew, especially just by the looks of this boulder, that I was gonna be able to just do nothing on this boulder and barely be able to touch it. And so those couple tries were actually just kind of for fun. I just wanted to pull on the boulder, see what it felt like, but uh, that one obviously is quite anti-style. Uh, like even on the stickiest and best of days, that boulder would be, um, quite the the challenge for me and I would really really have to project that uh, and so yeah just kind of tried it a couple times and that f looks and feels like it's probably the hardest thing in the gym and then yeah I uh, <clears throat> here I am doing like a moderate that's another thing I really want to make sure I'm doing going forward is getting like a lot of volume lots of variety and uh, hopping on like moderates throughout the session also because uh, moderates can really like surprise you and just uh, stump you without like like boulders can be unsuspecting looking and really stop you and a good example of that is this boulder that we're trying here this white one 
was definitely challenging in the session. I did not feel sticky, but this is also just a very anti-style boulder. Sort of just using a lot of wrist power uh, on this left-hand sloper is just really what I'm bad at. And this is something the McNamies are really good at. Like to watch Guy and Kinder do this boulder would probably be laughable. <laughs> they would probably just easily pull off of this left-hand sloper to go to the next hold. And meanwhile, it's definitely like one of my biggest weaknesses. So I should definitely try this boulder again as well the next time we come to Rose Block. So here we are the next day at Offsite. Now I have yet to visit Offsite. It is a pretty brand new gym in Montreal and they have like a really interesting concept going where they are really focusing on like the training um, aspect of climbing. And they have this pretty epic spray wall as you can see. And they have various boards and training apparatus. I think they're one of the few gyms in Montreal or like in, in like the surrounding areas to have like a couple of tension boards. And I think they have the 12 by 12 tension board on the way, which I know a lot of people are looking forward to. But me, myself, I am very interested in this thing that we are training on right now. And it is a nice new spray wall. And now the biggest draw of the spray wall for me is that, as you can see, it's not filled with like just a ton of fiberglass, you know, sticky, fresh holds and volumes. And this is obviously very important for me as I've been constantly complaining about my skin being pink and destroyed. And I really, really need to change that and start preserving it. Otherwise, training in the city is just gonna be so unsustainable. So I think that this spray wall is actually gonna be a lifesaver. The holds are like the perfect texture. They're just pretty standard texture. There's like, you know, a couple nice fiberglass holds on this wall, but like after I finished this whole campus session, my skin wasn't any worse than when I started off, which is exactly what I want. So I'm like super, super happy about this spray wall. And it's also just really good. Like there's a good variety of holds. It's a really well set spray wall. Um, I know that Toma had a part in setting the spray wall, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> but yeah, like this, this spray wall, and it's adjustable too, uh, the spray wall, which is, is super cool. I, I usually like to train at 45 degrees though. So when you see me training on this thing, it'll basically always be at 45 unless I want to try um, some other boulders set by other people. But yeah, here we are having a campus session on this super epic spray wall. I got to the gym early and I made up some boulders. I spent like about an hour making up uh, boulders for this session. I had to make some campus boulders and just a couple normal boulders as well uh, for the spray wall session that will follow this campus session. And I'll also just quickly mention that I bumped into Loy at the gym today. So he is having a campus session of his own and uh, we're training together. He was trying, I think I have a clip of it actually coming up soon. He was trying his own really cool uh, paddle campus as I'm uh, rotating, trying this boulder, which is a super cool one I made actually. I call this one kilter style campus because this move here um, off the blue pinch to the white, it, oh, okay, here is Loy's boulder. I did manage to get one clip of it. He ends up sending this boulder, uh, but I don't think I recorded it. But yeah, this move off the blue pinch is like a similar style to JW1 on the kilter board, and uh, it's quite fun. It's obviously not so, so similar of a move since I'm able to almost campus this move. And I don't actually think I stuck that move on, on JW1 on the kilter when I tried it. But 
is inspired by that move. And so this session, I was feeling pretty decent um, since we're going to continue on with this rating system, I think. Let's say I was a nice 7 out of 10 today. I had a lot of energy. I felt like I could try really hard, which was, which was a lot of fun. And it's always fun to just bang out some max effort attempts on a campus session. Um, but I found that my hands were just like a little bit not used to the intense contact strength that canvassing requires since it's actually been like about a month since our last campus session. So I felt a little bit rusty basically, but I felt pretty decent during the session. And, um, and actually as well, like by the end of the session, my elbows were also a bit sore because um, I wasn't used to like the super powerful pulling that uh, canvassing demands. So anyway, here we are moving on to another boulder. This one was super cool. And this move up to the red is, is probably the crux. This hold is a little bit better than it looks um, from this angle. It looks like it's just like a terrible sloper, but it's actually got a bit of a lip to it. So when we hit this hold, it's like all about loading the right hand. It's just a nice superhero move. I really like this campus boulder. But then the second last hold, it does not have a lip on it. So this one is actually kind of just a terrible slipper. And I was just saying to Loy there that my left hand just doesn't stay on the second last. It is such a, a cool, balancey campus move. Um, I was pretty happy with how this one turned out. And so here I figure out how to stick the second last hold. And I found that the only way that I could stick it was by using my right foot to stop my rotation just by tapping the wall, even with just my sock on. And so now I'm not really weighting the wall when I do this. It just is kind of stopping my spin, similar to what you might do with your arm when you train like one arm hangs. And for me, this is like just super kosher in my campus sessions. And the logic is that you'll never find yourself not able to do this while you're climbing, like just stopping your spin with foot tapping on the wall. So I, I am fully on board for this during campus sessions. So yeah, I was able to get a pretty cool send of that boulder. It felt nice to do like a nice hard campus boulder. And I'm psyched to start having some more campus sessions and spray wall sessions and really build back my power that I think has actually maybe been depleting just a little bit since we haven't been focusing on it for a while. And I think we've been spending too much time on sticky base pullers um, while we've been training for the past three weeks and I've been neglecting my power training. So it's time to build that back. And so here I am finishing the session off with the, the mini spray wall session that comes after this campus session. And this spray wall session is basically up to 30 minutes. So the idea is if I have any gas left in the tank after my campus, I can continue uh, training on the wall on like normal boulders for up to 30 minutes. Now that being said, since I wasn't so used to campusing, I did not have much gas left in the tank. So I wanted to try and make up like just a nice moderate boulder on the wall, um, make a boulder that Hopefully lots of people can come and try if you happen to be a viewer in Montreal and are going to visit offsite. I'm going to try and set like a, a good amount of bowlers in like the V789 range. And this one I set I think is quite fun. Here we got Loy putting a burn on it. He was uh, campusing this whole time with me so he was pretty gassed. If he wasn't so gassed it would have been easy flash but I got him on the last move so. Yeah, that wraps up a pretty fun campus and spray wall session. And now our next session to do is our workout. So usually I will just do this workout like right after the spray wall training while I'm while my body's still like feeling pretty warm and activated from the from the spray wall. And so like I said, I for the past like three weeks while we've been just bouldering in Montreal. I've still been doing these four exercises off camera and I just haven't been filming them because I have filmed them a lot in 
previous episodes. And after I've shown the same exercise over and over again, it can be kind of boring to watch, uh, especially if I don't have anything new to say about them. But I think it's time to bring them back in the episodes for a little bit. Um, that along with our hangboard that's coming up next, just because we have a lot of new viewers at this point and uh, we're moving into a new training phase and I think I have some things to say. And just like general um, things that I haven't really talked about while I'm doing my workouts, I feel like I haven't said everything there is to say about how I go about doing my strength workouts and uh, hangboard and whatnot. So yeah, these exercises are pretty classic for me, just like bread and butter, super translatable exercises uh, that I do all the time. In fact, I'd say these four uh, strength exercises I'm doing right now are like my top four exercises for climbing. And any other exercises I do, like sometimes I'll deadlift, sometimes I will do uh, like bench press or some other things but I feel like those I could take or leave and are just like an added bonus. But the core four of weighted dips, uh, pistol squats, military press, and weighted jump squats, I find those are like uh, super, super translatable to comp style bouldering. And when I train these exercises for like a good one or two months before like some target events or some target competitions, I really feel like I have a good foundation of strength and uh, those are like my core four. And so I will fill my workout for the next few episodes and I, like I said, I probably have more to say about how I go about doing my workouts that I haven't covered in previous episodes. So yeah, basically the idea is with every workout that I film going forward, I'll try to talk about something new or different that I haven't mentioned about how I go about doing my workouts. So you can expect that going forward. And so now it was time for the hangboard. I, after I finished my strength exercises, I rested for about two to three hours because my fingers definitely needed to recover from the spray wall training. I couldn't just go straight into my hangs since I'm really trying to push my weight at this point as we're going into peak season. Uh, the hangboard that I've been doing off camera for the past month, as well as pinch block, I've been doing at a two rep range for five sets. So a bit of a higher volume for me. And this was my first session of just doing one rep for six sets. And so this was where I was really trying to up my weight. And while I was doing two reps of my hangs, I was doing about 90 pounds and two reps of my pinches, I was doing about 65 pounds. So you can see I'm doing a bit of a weight increase today. And I was feeling quite strong today too. Um, it was nice to, to really start like pushing the strength and like I said, I will also continue filming my hangboard and pinch routine uh, for the next like few workouts and talk a bit more about them and how I go about doing them and sort of my training philosophies when it comes to hangboard and pinch block. But that uh, wraps up today's day of training. Uh, I'm really excited for what feels kind of like a fresh start, really getting back to like focusing on the comps, uh, getting back into comp mode, getting back more into looking more at trying to feel like a better climber and increase my own ability and, and peak for the comps rather than try and perform all the time on bowlers in the sessions, which I've been doing for the past few weeks and I've been, in, been getting too caught up in it, I think. So it's time to refocus, try to, my, try to make myself a better climber and really peak. And that's what I'm super, super psyched to do right now. And the added bonus is that by actually training properly and optimally for these comps, it's gonna help my skin in the process. And that's like super important because I've been suffering recently. But yeah, that uh, wraps up today's episode. Tomorrow's rest day for me. And then we're gonna go do these sessions all again. Um, but obviously we'll bowler at a different gym and we'll have some different spray wall bowlers to try. So you can look forward to the next episode. <coughs> Insert catchy video to here.